everybody. My name is Jim Farmer. I'm an arts reporter for Georgia Voice. I'm also the festival director of Out on the Film at Atlanta's LGBTQ Film Festival. Uh, we're here today to talk about the film Roadhead. Three friends, including a gay couple, take a road trip to the Mojave Desert where their complicated relationships are pushed to their breaking point as the group encounters a reclusive murderous cult in the new LGBTQ horror film Roadhead, which premieres on digital platforms on June 4th. Please welcome the director of the film, David Del Rio. Hi there. Thanks for joining us today, David. I enjoyed the film. Yeah. Oh, I really appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks for uh, taking the time to talk with me today as well. Excited to. So how did this project come up? Uh, I worked with uh, John Paul Burkhardt and David Gunning, the producers, okay. on a couple of short films starting in about 2013, 2014. And so then, you know, those films kind of took us to the Cannes Film Festival, yeah. took us to a lot of other festivals. And we had a lot of fun in France. And, Imagine. and, and basically, you know, um, a couple of years later, they got funding for um, to do a feature called Sick for Toys. And they asked me to jump on board again. And of course I said, yes, because, you know, people in my position, you know, don't get offer onlys in directing jobs, you know? So, so I was just like, I don't care what the heck the script is about. We'll, we'll try to make it better and better, but um, you know, let's, let's uh, work on it. And so that was a, a, a beautiful grueling experience. And then they said, Hey, we, we shop sick for toys around. We got funding for another movie and um, we have this concept. What do you think of this script? And I said, well, you know, the, the, I apologize for the beeping uh, behind me. I'm in a like lobby with microwaves everywhere. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, I was kind of not uh, uh, responsive to the title, but then I continued to read the script and I said, yeah, there's something there. There's, there are characters here that, uh, that are fascinating to me where, you know, um, what if we were put in a situation where a person uh, dressed as a medieval executioner in the middle of the desert, um, what would you do if the one person that you were stranded with was someone that you just had to be friends with because of default and not because you actually really liked them? And that in, that story was really interesting to me. And I said, yeah, there's something I can do with this. And uh, and the rest is history. Oh, great. Um, you know, there there is obviously a horror in the film. There's some violence in the film. But there's also a, a very welcome sense of humor. Can you talk about that? Yeah, you know, I remember, I remember reading the script and and saying, you know, there 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 is humor in a way of not to add humor just for the sake of it being funny, but it was in the core of the characters of how they kind of spoke in real life. Like these are the kind of characters that would speak. Uh, at home, you know, in Venice, in Venice Beach, California, like, you know, the, these are characters that would uh, um, really take humor as a defense mechanism in their life. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I was interested with the idea of not just trying to make a horror comedy, comedy to really just make it funny. Um, I was more interested in saying, well, you know, these are characters that um, use humor as a defense mechanism mechanism of being really really scared and how do we find that balance there um and also you know the big the big core attitude that we all had jumping into this film was you know the film is called roadhead so let's have fun exactly you know it, it, it's a fun it's a fun title and it's a bonkers <laughs> you know, a bonkers villain, you know, and with, with bonkers, bonker secrets coming out and, and bonker parts, you know, and, and, you know, we wanted to get down to the truth of it, not just trying to make it funny. We, want, we really wanted to get down to, well, why are these characters responding this way? And why, you know, why are these leaders doing what they're doing? And why does this executioner want to bow down to these leaders? He does not have to, um, but he just like is so obsessed with them, you know? And I found that really funny as well, where a big executioner 
villain actually has a soft spot for something somewhere. Um, these were the, these were the elements that I really wanted to explore to figure out the why of the human condition more than just trying to get some laughs. Exactly. David, in terms of films, were there any any films that inspired you or you sort of wanted to get in the same vein of? Well, I went, I, I went you know, I, I'm a cinephile, right? So yeah. I really try to find movies that are not matching the exact sort of genre and style, you know? I, I like to feel like I'm a professor and, and give out homework to the actors and say, watch these following movies and stuff. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I wanted, to, I wanted them to watch the deer hunter because, you know, there, there is a, there's the idea of, of, of not surviving with anybody, but your best friend mm -hmm. at war or at a time of, of life threatening, right. Um, when your life's being threatened. Um, but for me to kind of get into the color and get into the speed and get into the tone of things like that, um, I did turn to um, Robert Rodriguez's Planet Terror and Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof. Um, yeah. You know, that was the sort of last pinnacle feeling of, of grindhouse road movies. Um, and so I just kind of went to that and um, I just basically saw it once, but I kind of knew what story I wanted to tell and how I wanted to tell it by that time. Um, LGBT characters in films like this usually don't last very long. I usually don't have much depth or dimension. Can you talk a little bit about how these characters are normally portrayed and how you wanted to maybe correct that or do something different? I did like the idea uh, that Justin and Xavier put in that script where, you know, who was the last survivor and sure. uh, and, and <clears throat> I kind of got over it of like how in, how different and you know uh, compared to other films and you know I, in terms of what you're saying in terms of like oh wow this does, doesn't usually happen that wasn't the thing that really excited me mm -hmm. um, um, although it was very cool um, uh, the thing really th that excited me was does it make sense that this character based on his or her actions make it to the end and does it make sense does the trail and the journey make sense to me um you know their sexual preference and sexual orientation gay straight that that you know that's kind of how i moved forward with forward with it because i was just telling a human story and i really was just telling a, a relationship story more than anything and um you know love is love and so the relationship is a relationship fear is fear survival is survival and and that was that was sort of the pinnacle of what i was kind of moving forward with um but everybody was excited on set i was too you know where it's like wow we you know we made it to this scene people are people are gonna love it you know and and there was that little excitement because you know i always tell my my cast and crew let's not forget and disconnect from the 14 year old self who wanted to do something like make a film like this for fun. So let's not kind of disconnect with that. So there was always that sense of like, this is pretty cool and this is pretty fun. I think audiences are gonna to respond to it, but, but of course, you know, you don't, you don't work from that place. You know, you kind of work from the place of is the story being told uh, in a truthful way, as truthful as it can be, uh, you know, in, in under the circumstance of being chased by a medieval executioner. <laughs> you now, your 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 producer of this film is gay, as is your mm -hmm. your main actor. Can you talk about mm -hmm. getting them aboard? They, I mean, the producer had me aboard, you know, oh. and so and so I was just very grateful for for that, and then. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I, 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 I honestly don't know what to say except that you know we were just collaborative artists sure. uh, uh, coming together, um, wanting to really tell a story, and um, and you know, from my perspective, you know, um, my dad would say, you know, always be the student in life, right? Not trying to be the teacher, and and for me, my my curiosity is always peaked and, and I've always wanted to be the student uh, in, in going up to, you know, 
Damien and John Paul and being like, you know, not really asking them questions based on, you know, sexual orientation or preference, but just coming from a place of relationship and love and, 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 and what's it like? And tell me about a fight. Tell me about uh, a rekindling, you know, tell me, tell me, you know, and then, it, it, and then, you know, they would tell me stories and then I'd be like, Oh, okay. So that just happened to my wife and I yesterday. Okay. So that's, that's fine. You know? Um, so that's all really, I, I got to say really about that because I, I don't feel really it's, it's my question to, to, to answer. Exactly. Uh, when did you film this? Uh, I we filmed this two years ago, so this is 2021. So we shot it in 2019, or even uh, yeah, 2019. Uh, uh, we shot it in 2019 in around June, I believe, mm-hmm. and uh, and we shot it in Barstow, California. And yeah. a big a big piece of that line item in the budget was constant waters, constant <laughs> waters, constant That's waters cool. where, where, you know, I just discovered that, that this, this scientific fact, maybe, you know, it like you got to have half of your body weights worth of, worth of water in, 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 in fluid ounces, you know? So, um, um, the desert does not care about that, right? So you can you can drink your full body, and you can drink uh, uh, two bodies worth of it, and yeah. you're kind of like, "Ooh, I'm thirsty. Ooh, I need another one." You know what I mean? And they're like, "Hey, David, you want a Red Bull?" I'm like, "Get that away from me!" You know. Um, and but but it was um, it was uh, it was fun, and it was as desolate uh, uh, and as as empty as you know, you saw it in the film, which we found such beauty in it. You know, we found real beauty in, in, in the world of nothingness. Um, um, and, uh, and we were, uh, yeah, we were just very excited to be there. Sure. How did COVID affect the release? Oh, I don't know. You know, being, being in the position of the director, you know what I mean? And only the director, you know, and not being the producer and and, an executive producer and and kind of being part of the discussions of marketing and distribution. um, um, I don't know how that uh, basically worked out, Um, but I do, you know, I could imagine me having done other productions during the height of, of COVID. I was in um, a Netflix film, uh, called the California Christmas, and we're about to shoot the uh, the sequel in a couple of months. And um, you know, I knew that was pretty pretty strict. And you know, I I think it's 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 the wave of everybody. You know, if every if, if someone tells me what they really think is going on in the, in the time of COVID and what's the real right way to release a film in COVID. I can I, I I just shut my ears because no one knows. No one freaking knows. And, and 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 the more we kind of open our minds up and how much we don't know, yeah. the world will kind of be a much uh you know a much more peaceful place, I think, you know. And so and so I think um I don't know how it was affected, but I do know that a, a, a part of making that decision is will the right amount of people be at home or will the right amount of people not be? Uh, and have we, do we have fatigue by, uh, of, you know what I mean? And, and so do we have the fatigue and do we have the, are we worn and torn and, and tired? Um, and so that a lot of, a lot of that goes into the, uh, to the decision, but I think, where we are at this particular moment, um, the release of, of Roadhead um, is a good spot, I think. I think people are kind of like ready for new content and, exactly. um, and, and they have their, their time to breathe, to go out to movie theaters and then sure. kind of come home um, and kind of, you know, um, spend time with their families and then come home. I think we're in a, I think we're in a good spot. Okay. Um, if I'm correct, I think you were mm-hmm. in Atlanta at the beginning of 2020 um, at SCAT ATV Fest to promote The Baker and the Beauty? Um, at Yes, yes, okay. I was actually, yeah. I, I remember that. Oh, were you, were you there? I was there, yes. Oh, okay. cool, yes. cool, it's always, that's awesome. It's, it's always such what a, a great what a great event that is. That was the first time I've been to, been to that uh, event. And, and, and it's a, it's a, for school, right? For, for, it, for, for college? It's for SCAD, yeah, SCAD. So it's oh, for SCAD, yeah, yeah. 
it's mostly for the students, but it's, it's such a, as a journalist, you know, and in so many watches TV, it's such an amazing to, to go there and see all these new shows and meet all the, the cast and crew. Yeah, yeah that, is, take, that is a nice, yeah. I, I was so disappointed that ABC didn't renew that show. I mean, oh, uh, thanks. I, I know that there was, there are a lot of people who liked and appreciate the show. Is there, is there any chance another network would, would do a second season? You, you want an exclusive, Jim? I'll give you an exclusive right now. Yeah. You'll, okay. be, you'll be the first to know. Uh, no, I think, uh, I think what we're looking at right now is that uh, Netflix has uh, officially said no. Mm -hmm. um, however, however, you know, um, that it's not, it's not really diminishing. Uh, um, it, it, you know, will these characters have another light of day? I, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, I do know that Netflix made a, made a, a, a decision, you know, um, and, and plus, I don't, you know, we don't owe that to them. <laughs> they don't owe that to us, really. We're not a Netflix original uh, uh, piece. However, I'm, um, I'm really grateful for the, for the second wind that, um, and the second life that um, Baker got to breathe a little bit, you know, um, and, and very grateful for the new audiences that came to um, see this really cookie cutter, very romantic um, um, story because uh, it, it, that was one of those shows that came out in the perfect time because it was light and frothy and sometimes people kind of needed that, you know? Um, and and I'll always be grateful for for my experience on Baker and the cast and the crew and and, and very grateful for Netflix that, that they gave us uh, a, a second shot for new eyes and ears and uh, people to watch it. And, and I'm really, really grateful for that. Great. Now you were um, on Broadway in the Heights. What was that again? Yeah. Like? Uh, well, I'm currently in New York now um, directing uh, something and, and, and it's really um, nice to be back in the city. I got to tell you, um, you know, it, it, I, we went by the, um, I'm going to trail off just a little bit. I'm sorry, but, but, you know, we went up by the uh, uh, Hamilton theater, which is the Richard Rogers theater on 46. And that's where I did in the Heights for, for six months. And, and that's also by the stage door is where I proposed to my wife uh, mm -hmm. because my wife and I met really, really first met before we met at a party um, four years later from this particular point, I'm about to tell you um, she was in NYU and I was um doing the show and I took a picture with her outside the stage door. Um, and we didn't know really that uh, until my mother-in-law mentioned, uh, who was just my girlfriend's mom at the time, mm -hmm. told Katie, hey, you know, you have a picture with, with him, right? And we were all kind of shocked and it was just a little weird and a little crazy. Um, you know, doing a show like In the Heights, <laughs> It, 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 being a Colombian and Cuban myself, it, it really, really struck a chord with me. Um, sure. You know, one of the reviews was, you know, West Side Story meets Fiddler on the Roof is how they described in the Heights. And, and I agree with that because it really is about family. It really is about tradition. It really is about um, making sure that um, the heart speaks and not selfishly, but for others. Um, and, and that was, those were one of the, all these messages is something that I was very happy to kind of perform um, every day. And, you know, you got to know what the weather was like outside based on <laughs> the reaction of the audience at a time, you know, where, you know, if it was really hot summer after like the opening number and we were done and you kind of get tired claps and stuff like that. And we're like, okay, it's super hot outside, obviously, you know, people are just tired and glad to be in the air condition, you know? Um, um, but, you know, got, you know, able to, rap and sing Lin-Manuel Miranda and um, Alex Lacamoire's music. And um, that was a that was a really special moment for me and also really opened a lot of doors back in LA, which is really strong film and television mecca. Um, people were more interested in knowing about that than all the other film and TV stuff that I had done uh, before that. So, it, you know, it, Broadway and, and theater really does um, give a stamp in, in, in one's in one's career. Um, so um, I'll always be grateful for, for in the Heights as well. Great. I have to say, 
anytime pitch perfect is on and I discover, <laughs> okay, I have to dismiss this deadline. I mean, I, I cannot never watch pitch perfect. It's one of my oh, favorite movies. What are your memories you. of pitch perfect? Wow. Um, pitch perfect, you know, pitch perfect was, a blast um um you know i i was a uh you know there is no right way to get a part in this in this industry so i um <laughs> i um auditioned for it once and then i got the call like four months later that i'm replacing somebody mm-hmm. and get on a get on a flight and and join these and, and join this this ride mm-hmm. um and so my first day of rehearsal was their three week presentation to Universal and to oh, wow. the, of all the the music and the dances and stuff like that? But I was prepared, you know, because they prepared me for for as as much as they can prepare me for twenty four hours. They prepared me, and uh, um, it was um, it was one of those projects that we all looked at each other and said, "Let's let's do our job," but it does feel good, right? Like this, this, you know, what we're doing here feels like it's something, you know, and, and we all kind of had a collective kinship and a collective bond, uh, the Bellas and the, and the troublemakers together, uh, um, that really, when you, when anytime I I haven't seen that movie in, in years, but anytime I see that movie and it pops, up and I catch a scene even if I'm in it or not I would basically remember that day of oh well we went tailgating the day before in the LSU game and mm-hmm. that was wild and 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 um it's like watching a home video every time I every time that thing uh, pops up because I'm still very good friends with a lot of uh, of the cast members and also um natalia anderson just directed um, so natalia anderson sorry natalia anderson uh was just uh not just but an assistant to elizabeth banks and max handelman and now she's a very successful television director who 10 years later cast me in a show um that we are going to start shooting the first season it's called maggie and it's going to be uh, premiering at uh, uh, an abc um but it's just like 10 years ago from pitch perfect you know we all kind of still help each other out and contact and and try to figure out ways to kind of work together again because you know we we, we do have that that family bond and I also do remember that it was a time where Workaholics was just coming out, or at least it was like the second season or something like that. And I'd never seen Workaholics and I didn't know who Adam Devine was. And um, Adam would say, oh yeah, well, and we, we'd go to these, these, these bars with these college kids. And it was <laughs> crazy how much, he was like Mick Jagger, Adam, you know, Adam was like, Mick Jagger, and I was just like, what is this show? <laughs> like that, that these colleges love. And he gave me the first two seasons on DVD and I watch and I go, okay, I get it. That's it's, it's a, a, a masterclass of comedy, I think. Um, and, um, you know, we were just, we were just a, a family and, and, um, a lot of us didn't know how to dance. A lot of us didn't know how to sing, but we were very much committed to training to do so. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, we put we put in all our work and, and we never thought it would be this big. We never thought it would be this big. Um, and, and, and we were just very happy for its success. And um, yeah, we still, we, still, we still have a really good bond and I still keep in touch with a lot of them. Oh, great. You, you mentioned earlier a few of the projects that you're, but can you talk a little bit about some of the, the work you're doing next? Sure. Um, so I got, um, so the show, uh, I start shooting the show for ABC called Maggie. Um, it would be with me and uh, Rebecca Rittenhouse. Um, and uh, it's created by uh, Justin Adler and Maggie Mole. Um, and uh, so we'll be starting to shoot that in September um, in LA. And then uh, my wife and I have a production company called Theater Row Productions. And we got uh, a feature film called The Big Feed uh, in post-production um, that stars my wife, Catherine Del Rio, Ivana Rojas, and uh, Manolo Gonzalez Vergara, um, Sofia's son. And uh, that's gonna come out sometime uh, later next year. We're still in post. Um, and 
Uh, my wife and I just got hired to write a um, screenplay for a thriller. So we are in the midst of that and our first draft is done in a month. So we're, we're still working away at that. So we've been very, very busy and uh, really, really grateful for um, the people that kind of want to work with my wife and I from behind the scenes and creating and developing uh, stories that, you know, we're pretty interested in, in, in telling. And so sure. hopefully we're, we're, hopefully we'll, you know, hopefully the script will get made. You, you know, I'm sure, you know, like it takes a long time for that to happen, but you know, um, the journey of it and the, the kind of work in it, you know, if you kind of switch your mindset of it not being result oriented, but really kind of like just diving in into these characters and diving into this situation and continuing to ask what if that, within itself is just really fun and gratifying work. I wanted to ask you briefly about the big feed it, because I was reading mm -hmm. about that this morning. Is yeah. Big feed, more of a horror film or sort of like roadhead horror with some comedy in it. It's definitely a horror comedy. It's definitely okay. a horror comedy. So I'll give you, I'll give you like the, the log line, basically uh, two women get hired to um, two women get hired to uh, as a maid service to clean a mansion for a, uh, a big event. Uh, mm -hmm. But they realize that the person that they're cleaning the house for is either a direct descendant or directly um, Dracula. Okay. And so then vampires come out and just, it's, and so then they, all they have is their, you know, cleaning sprays and brooms to fight uh to fight off some vampires and it's uh it's really fun and you know um it's produced by um mvp original media and conglomerate media and um you know they were very you know they were very um supportive in our filmmaking and and, sure. and now they want to work with us again on another feature and we'll just see what that next one is so we're very proud of it great i look forward to that the film, Roadhead, the film Roadhead premieres on digital platforms June 4th. It is a lot of fun. Please welcome again. Thank you so much for the director, David Del Rio. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Pleasure. You have a good day. You too as well. Bye. Thanks, David.